Hey everyone, hope you're having a great Zero Summit. My name is Pablo Munoz Gomez. I'm a 3D concept and character artist, and I've been using ZBrush for almost 10 years, but my first contact with the software was around 2006. Um, and in the past few years, really, it's become one of my, you know, my go tools to, to do everything, really. So I use it on a, almost on a daily basis. So today, I just want to show you a couple of tips on how to work and how to deal with one of my favorite features in ZBrush, which is uh, fiber mesh. And obviously, it's that the feature, the, the the thing that I used to create the the hair and the and the fur for this uh, creepy creature. So I'm going to start by showing you some tips and tricks on how to deal with it and how to grow the fiber mesh and then how to uh, groom it or, or give it a bit of shape because it can be a little bit tricky, um, especially if you don't know some of the settings. So I have prepared this this project uh, just to give you an idea of what you can achieve very fairly quickly, really with this um, with this fiber mesh. But I'm going to start simple with a sphere. And I have this standard ZBrush UI. And the way that you grow fiber mesh uh, in, in just a couple of clicks is very easy. I'm going to hold Control. And that's uh, accessing my masking brushes to mask the top of this sphere. I'm going to hold Control and click on the mask to blur it. right? And then I'm just going to go down in the tool palette to my fiber mesh sub palette. I'm going to click on Preview. And that's it. You have fiber mesh. Right now, there are a couple of things that is important to kind of like get right from the beginning. One is uh, you can go in two ways, basically, or take two different avenues. One is with the fiber mesh settings, sort of like establishing the, the look and feel of the fiber mesh with the settings. And the other one is with the grooming. And I, I say that it's kind of like two different ways, because if you are going to groom or if you're going to um, yeah, basically give shape with the grooming brushes, uh, you're going to basically override all the settings that you set up in the settings. So I'm going to explain that in a second. So basically, if uh, now that we have fiber mesh, we can go ahead and start tweaking the settings to change the, the shape, the color, and you can create a bunch of different things, not just hair or, or, or fur. So for instance, let's reduce the, the max fibers and that's re reducing the number. And by the way, this is just a preview we haven't actually created, so we can keep tweaking this. I'm going to increase the length, for example, take the gravity off so that they're kind of like shooting straight up. Uh, here with this color, we can change, let's say, let's create some some weird roses or something like that. So you have the tip and you have the, the base. So I, I gave the base a green color and the tip a red color. And you have this color profile that allows you to change how much influence of each color you have. So the left hand side is the root and the right hand side is the tip. So if I give more prominence uh, to the green color, to the to the root, I can click to add a point and just drag this like so. And now we have more of that color. Let's make it a little bit darker, right? And then we also have these uh, settings here to colorize the base. So right now it's at 0 0.5. I'm going to give it 100% to, to 1. Now we have that full influence of that color, right? The other thing that we can do is go to the width profile. I'm going to reset this one. And the width profile allows you to change the, the thickness of the entire um, the entire fur or the entire fiber. So I'm going to increase the coverage, and that's just the overall width. As you can see, I'm just increasing the, the thickness of this in a way. I'm going to set the root scale to 1 and the tip to 1 as well. Not to 10, sorry, to 1 and 1. I have to press Enter. There we go. And with the width profile, I can change this. So I'm going to take the root down. So you see the, the beginning of that fiber becomes really small. And I'm going to take the tip all the way up, right? It becomes really, really thick. Now I can just start adding points and variate that thickness. So we can add a, maybe a couple more points here just to sharpen this. And you can also click on this uh, surrounding circle as well, just to make it a bit sharper. There we go. So you see, uh, it's pretty pretty easy how you can just tweak this and, and generate a bunch of different you know looks uh, to your fibers. I'm gonna go ahead and maybe add a bit of twist just to rotate the each fiber on itself. Um, and if anything, we can add some maybe revolve radius. And this revolve radius is going to uh, create kind of like a curl effect. Right. So all I'm doing right now is just altering the settings of the fiber mesh. Right. And let's say I'm happy with this, but I want to further tweak it. Right. I'm going to go ahead and click accept. And I'm going to get this pop up when I have a plenty of, of fibers asking me if I want to activate fast preview render or fast preview mode. I'm going to click no in this instance. 
And Sibrosh now created from those settings a new uh, fiber mesh or a new uh, sub tool, right? So now we have, if I go into solo mode, I have the sphere, we can clear that mask, and I have the fibers, right? So in the fibers, I can just go ahead and click on the brush palette. Let me just put that here on the right so you can see properly. I'm going to click on the thumbnail or the brush thumbnail, and I'm going to use something like the, this one, the chrome hair toss. So hopefully you can see that. Yeah. All right, I'm going to grab that, increase the brush size, and I'm going to start grooming this, right? And that's how easy you can just start giving this fiber mesh some some more kind of like a flow or an intentionality. Um, now the issue here, or not the issue, but in a way the the alternative workflow that I wanted to, to mention is because I set up all the settings from the fiber mesh settings really, um, when I start grooming this, I'm basically overriding all that twist, all that um, revolve radius, all that gravity thing. So in a way, you have those two avenues. You have the option to go with fiber mesh settings and create something that looks really cool um, like I just did there with some settings, press accept, and then you have the fiber mesh. Um, and the other way is just to keep it very, very simple, which is what I do for, in most of the cases for uh, grooming, and then use the grooming brushes to alter the, you know, the, the shape of it. So that's what I'm gonna show you very quickly. I'm gonna jump into this creature, right? And I'm gonna show you the second method, the second um, workflow, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the fibers. And I'm going to also turn off the poly paint. And you'll see I already have prepared this mask, uh, very similar to what I just did with the sphere. I'm going to go to the preview, create these fibers. And these are almost like the, uh, the default settings. So the first thing I'd like to do is change the base to white and the tip to white as well. So we have a pretty clean set of fibers and I can see clearly what I'm doing. The second thing I like to do is change my document size. So you'll notice if I, even if I get closer, there is a bit of a weird artifacts all around. And that's just because of the thickness of the fiber mesh. And it has to do with the way that Zeros handles the anti-aliasing. So uh, for that, you can click on AA half and they'll see the half of the document and you'll see that, uh, you know, the fibers are a little bit more, well, clearer and, and sharper, but the document is smaller. So I'm going to go to document and put that here so you can see what I'll do. Um, document, I'm gonna click on double, and that's just simply gonna double the document. I'm gonna hold Control and N to clear. Drag my creature again, and go to AA half. Perfect. So now I have similar kind of like document size to work with, but I have anti-alias now. Great, so let's go back to our fibers. And like I said, the, the settings here are relatively unchanged. Like I, I won't, I won't add twist or rotation or um, you know gravity, any of those things, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the grooming technique or the grooming approach. Uh, what I want to change is the amount of fibers, of course. So in this case, I want to have a few more fibers, like so, and I want to increase the segments. So the segments is the amount of subdivision of each fiber. At the moment, I have seven subdivision. The more subdivision that you add, the the softer is going to appear when you when you groom it. Uh, but I'm going to get to that in just a second. I think six should be fine. And we have a max fibers of 11. And this number is in the thousand. So 11,000 um, fibers, right? Uh, which is which is fine. I think it looks good. And you see it's just growing from that mask that I that I masked uh, previously. So I'm going to go ahead and click on accept and I'm going to get the same fast preview um, notification. In this case, I'm going to click on yes and I'm going to show you a couple of techniques as well or tricks to deal with it. So now that I have um, accepted the fiber mesh, we should have a new subtool and it's automatically selected. The next thing that I like to do to be able to deal with fiber mesh is to see it uh, a little bit clearer. So I like to select something, let's say uh, something like a yellowish color for the fibers and go to the color palette. Let's drop that here as well. And I'm going to click on fill object. Make sure that RGB is enabled and fill object and make sure that RGB is set to 100 so that we can fill the entire object. There we go. Now, because I don't have poly paint in all the, in all the subtools just in the fiber mesh, I can simply just change the color to something like a blue color. And I would be able to see something very contrasted and, and basically see where, where the gaps of the fibers are. So it's just an easy way to, to see what you're doing, right? Then if we go back to 
the fiber mesh palette, right? Uh, right now, obviously, everything is grayed out because we already created. But if you go down to the preview settings, right? Here's where you have the fast preview, that notification that we got. So if I click this to turn it off, you will see the, the real set of fibers, right? Now, this is great because you can kind of like uh, use guides to guide the entire set of fiber mesh when you're grooming. So I'm going to enable this and I'm going to reduce the previous visibility. So now I'm going to go for something like six or eight, and you'll see that it just reduces the amount of fibers that we can actually see. And that is much easier to work with. So I have the uh, groom hair toss selected. I'm going to increase the brush size. And I'm going to start just grooming this Oops, without RGB so that I don't paint it, uh, which you can also do, by the way. Uh, we had it in seven or eight, something like that, right? And I'm using, using a large brush so that you can see how, how quick this is. Right? Um, so that's just a very quick grooming of the creature's hair. Uh, but now, if I turn this off, you see the, the, the few guides that we moved and that we changed, they're basically guides for the rest of the fiber. So uh, it's very easy. Uh, obviously, you can keep tweaking these once you turn this off, but it's just a very simple way to, to go about it. And finally, just to complete this uh, sort of trick on, on dealing with fiber mesh and, and be able to control this a little bit better, there are two things that I would suggest you do. The first one is from the brush palette, which I should already have here. Uh, when you select any grooming brush, right, uh, you can go to the fiber mesh top palette here and there is this setting called the front collision tolerance or detection tolerance tolerance sorry um, and that basically allows you to change the the gap that or that buffer between the fiber and the surface of the model so if i do this maybe from a different angle here right and it rotate around you see there is a a gap between you know the the fiber and the actual model so that's this collision tolerance so i'm going to undo that set this to five or you know some something around there like a, a number around there and then I have a, a bit more of a freedom to get these fibers closer to the mesh and the final trick to deal with fiber mesh is uh, using polygroups and masking so I'm gonna go ahead and turn on polygroups right and if you hold the control key using the mask with a smaller brush size you can just literally paint the mask and what's great about this technique is that as you paint the mask, you, you're actually painting or creating a mask for the entire fiber, regardless of where you touch. So now that I created this, this simple mask, I'm going to go ahead and hold Control and W, and now we have polygroups. So this is great, again, because we can hold Control and Shift, right, to isolate this, mask that. We can turn off polygroup now, bring the rest, invert the mask, and we can start splitting this and create kind of like this this effect, right? <laughs> you want to give him, uh, this creature, some more more intentional, um, you know, hairstyle or, or something like that. But there you have it. It's a pretty simple trick. Uh, hopefully that gives you some ideas on how to deal with fiber mesh and, you know, make the, the whole workflow a little bit easier. Enjoy the rest of the summit.